Assalamu alaikum and good morning everyone. Welcome again to this new and interesting lesson about sentence stress. So after seeing stress in the different types and categories of the English words, today we'll try to explore stress within the English sentence. Right. Stress within the English sentence. Now, the first thing we should know about sentence stress is that it is free. What does it mean, it is free? It means uh, sentence stress uh, depends mainly on the meaning we want to convey within a sentence. We stress certain words and not others. These words are the words which are uh, uh, emphasized by the speaker, all right, or a particular type of words which are usually stressed within the English sentence. Good. Now, sentence stress represents, we can say, the music of spoken English. Clear? It's the music of spoken English and it's very helpful. Huh? It helps us so much to understand spoken English, even if it is very rapid, okay, uh, speech. Right. Very fast and rapid speech. So here, sentence stress comes to huh, help us understand it uh, well and properly. Good. Also, sentence stress gives English its uh, rhythm. Clear? Its rhythm and, and beat. Rhythm and beat. Because as you know, the English language is stress timed language. It is stress timed language. Right. What does it mean? It means that it depends on huh, its uh, rhythm on uh, those stressed uh, words and syllables, right, within uh, the English sentence. Right, the English sentence. Good. Now, if you compare between word stress and uh, sentence stress, we find that in word stress we put an accent or we have an accent on one syllable within word. Right. In word stress, we place our primary stress on one syllable within word. But in sentence stress, here we put right our accent on certain words. Clear? Within a sentence. Within a sentence. So, sentence stress is related to a uh, set or group of words within a sentence. Right. Good. Now, uh, putting and uh, finding sentence uh, stress uh, depends on knowing, right, uh, the two types of words with the English sentence. Right, we must know that there are two major types of words at the level of the English sentence. Right, and these two words determine, right, uh, the right position of sentence stress. The first type of words is called content words or lexical words. Clear? Content words or lexical words and these represent the keywords in a sentence. These words are the words which carry the meaning, which carry the real content of the sentence. Right. And if we remove them without them, the sentence has no meaning. Clear. Has no meaning. So these are the essential words we find in any English sentence. They are right. Called content words. Huh? They carry the content. Good. Uh, content words includes uh, main verbs. Are content words. Nouns. Adjectives. Adverbs. Negative auxiliaries and also WH words. Clear? WH derogative words are content words. Clear? Uh, good. So uh, here with content words and in connected speech, all right, these content words they have the qualitative, okay, the same qualitative pattern of. Right, uh, of them as, ok, 
Okay, when they are in isolation, clay, it means they retain some prominence. Huh? They keep some prominence, right? Within uh, the sentence. Okay, the same one. Okay, approximately they have what I, they are in love and in isolation, right? Even when there is no pitch and when they are relatively unstressed sometimes, but they keep that uh, uh, amount of prominence, right? And they are stressed. So, content words in the English sentence are stressed words. Clear. When we say stressed, it means we stress the syllable, right, which receives the primary stress in them. Clear. So, I repeat, content words are usually stressed, right, in a sentence, and we uh, stress uh, the stressed syllables within them. Right. Go. Now we have only exception about uh, the verb to be, which is, uh, although it's a content word, but it is unstressed. Clear. Be with its different forms, although it is uh, uh, a content word, but it is unstressed. Right. Go. Now, this is concerning the first type of words we find in the English sentence. Content words we said that are stressed. Good. Second type, which are usually unstressed, are function or grammar or structure words. Function, grammar or structure words. Right. Now, uh, these are simple words which uh, make the sentence grammatically correct. They give a sentence its correct form and its structure. Clear. And its structure. So, these words can be removed and we can understand the sentence uh, normally without them. Right. Without them. Now, these function words, they may have, uh, or they may be, right, uh, unstressed, right, and sometimes stressed. They may be uh, accented, and other times unaccented, right. Accented form, or they may have accented form, right. But usually they are unstressed, right. So, function words, grammar words, right, are usually unstressed, clear. Usually unstressed, and they can be sometimes stressed if, for example, emphasize uh, one of them. Okay, one of the grammar words or function words, it can be here stressed, but usually they are unstressed. Clear? They are unstressed. Huh? Go and take usually a weak form. All right. Good. Uh, function words include uh, prepositions, pronouns, articles. Conjunctions, possessive adjectives, huh? uh, auxiliary verbs, right, and modal verbs like is, must be. As you see, most of them, okay, have function of just relating, clear, just relating. Huh? That's why if we remove them, the sentence keeps its meaning without any problem. You can understand it uh, easily, right? The main function is to. Uh, maintain the structure right and the relationship between the different content words of the sentence. Good. Uh, we said that these are uh, unstressed usually, but sometimes we can stress them. Why? For example, uh, maybe to emphasize uh, them, a particular meaning in them. Right. Or sometimes also to correct uh, information. Right. For example, uh, we have for example, uh, they haven't been uh, to Canada, haven't they? So, A here is asking, they haven't been to Canada, haven't they? B will answer, okay, emphasizing some of the grammar words, and he will say, no, they haven't, but we have. So here, as you see, uh, uh, they and we, although they are pronouns, they are grammar words, but when they are emphasized uh, and pointed to by uh, the speaker through his uh, emphasis, they become stressed and they have strong form. Clear. Strong form. Because usually they are stressed and they receive usually weak form. Good. 
Uh, now, another remark about uh, function words. Uh, many poly or some polysyllabic words, right, uh, function words mainly, polysyllabic function words may carry uh, sentence stress. Sometimes some of them can be stressed, like in the case of some prepositions. For example, I have uh, behind. Hind is stressed here, right, has strong form in hind. And here also, T is stressed. Okay, has strong form here also. Right. Also, for the topic pronouns, I mean WH words, we simply are, right, always, normally, uh, usually uh, stressed. They are stressed. Like, for example, uh, why are you here? Huh? So, why and what and which, and then the other WH words are uh, stressed and they have strong form, usually. Right. Good. Now, to show stress and intonation, right, at sentence level, there are certain principles we must respect. Okay, that should be taken into consideration. Some principles we should know about uh, stress within uh, the English sentence. Right. Now, first principle is that, or idea, that in isolation, every English word has primary stress. Whether monosyllabic or polysyllabic, right? Word. Any English word has primary stress. Clear? But for the case of monosyllabic words, I mean words of one syllable, right? These, the stress when they are allowed, huh, is not indicated, right? But it exists. So, for these one syllable words, we indicate and we shall stress on them only when they are in a sentence. Clear? Only when they are in a, in a sentence. Right. Good. Uh, also, uh, second okay, principle. In sentence stress also we have different degrees of stress. For example, we have primary stress, secondary stress, and unstressed uh, syllables and words. Right. So all these also exists in or at the level of the English sentence and at the level of sentence stress. Right. Another also point, which is very important, in sentence stress, the last syllable is the strongest one. Right. The strongest one. And it's called the nucleus. Right. It's called the nucleus. Right. Of course, here it depends on the meaning we want to convey. Usually, the last uh, syllable, right, in the sentence, is the strongest one, and it's called the nucleus. Good. Also, uh, don't forget that when we say we stress content words in uh, English sentence, we mean we stress syllables which are stressed within them. Within these stressed, uh, or within these content words. Clear? Good. Another also point which is important and very, very essential is that the time between stressed words or content words, right, is always the same. Always the same. So, in sentence stress, we must respect, right, the timing between the stressed and the content words. It must be equal time. It means even if we have, for example, uh, more than uh, three syllables, right, which are unstressed between the first and second content word, and only one syllable between second and third content word, we must give them equal time. Right, for example, I have this example. Will you sell my car because I have gone to France? So here, will you sell is content word, stressed. Car also is content word, is stressed. And also gone and the friends are content words and are stressed too. And the others, of course, are uh, function words. Now, look between cell and car, I have my, only one syllable. And between car and gone, I have B, cause I have. So here I have three syllables. So in sentence stress, we must uh, uh, devote, right, equal time, right, for the unstressed syllables between the content words and the stressed words. It means my one syllable, I must pronounce it a bit 
slowly, and because I have three syllable sounds here which are stressed, I must uh, pronounce them a bit quickly, a bit quickly to have an equal time between them. Why? Of course, uh, we change the speed of function words. Why? To keep uh, the rhythm uh, and the beat of or between those content words. Clear? Content words. Right. Go. So, that's all we can say about uh, sentence stress. Right. Uh, it's really important to know and to learn. Right. We need it so much. Uh, because it helps us to understand the spoken English language mainly and what words are emphasized within a sentence. Right. Within a sentence. So, uh, thank you so much. And I wish you uh, the best uh, luck. Thank you.